In this tutorial, I will explain the concept of a visual perspective. A visual perspective represents a screen layout displayed to the user, usually when the user logs in. A WRIM automatically creates two visual perspectives for each business space version. One for the administrator and one for guest. Let's take a look at the visual perspective for the administrator. When a user logs in, a WRIM displays the visual perspective that corresponds to the access level of the user. For details about a WRIM access levels, please watch the access levels tutorial. For every access level that you define in your, in your application, you must specify a visual perspective that will be used for this access level. This is done by selecting the Use in Login property of a visual perspective and ticking this checkbox. Since a WRIM always creates two access levels, administrator and guest, it also creates two visual perspectives for these access levels. But you don't need to create a separate visual perspective for each access level. It is possible to use the same visual perspective for several access levels. This can be done in this area here. A visual perspective consists of frames. A list of all available frames is displayed here. Most frames can be switched on or off using the visible property. Let's switch all of them on and look at them. At any time we can see the preview of the visual perspective in the preview area here. When all frames are on, there is not enough room here to display it properly. But we can also look at the preview in a standalone browser by clicking on this button here. So this is our visual perspective with all frames displayed. A visual perspective can have a banner frame displayed at the top of the screen, which is great for displaying logos, images or HTML links. A top bar, which is used for a horizontal menu. Left and right frames that, that can be used either for a menu or for displaying application specific forms. A footer area that can be used to display copyright. A status bar in the mainframe where most interaction with the user happens. Like I said, all frames except the mainframe are optional and can be switched off. The properties of a frame are displayed in the properties window when you select the frame by clicking on it. Here you can specify the size of the frame, turn borders on or off, make it collapsible, specify background, and so on. A frame usually contains tabs. You can see a list of tabs of the frame if you expand the frame. Here we only have the main tab. Let's define another tab for our main frame. We can see how they look in the preview window. You can click on a tab to switch between them and each tab can display a different content, but at the moment they are empty. Properties of a tab are displayed in the properties window when you select it. Tabs can be displayed at the top or bottom of the frame, they can have icons, badges or can be closable by the user. A tab consists of content panels. You can see a list of content panels that belong to a tab by expanding the tab. By default, a single content panel is created. If you click on a content panel, you can see its properties 
in the properties window. One of the most important properties of a content panel is its contents, specified here. By default, content panels are empty. However, I can put some HTML into the content panel or get it to display a query, start a process or run some other command. Let's delete the new tab and switch off left and right frames. Let's now get our content panel to run a query. For more details about queries, please watch the queries tutorial. I have used this application in other tutorials and in this application we have customers and a query that shows all customers. The query is started from the application menu, but for the purposes of this exercise I will display this query inside a content panel so that it runs immediately when the user logs in. So to do this I click on the contents property of the content panel and select the display results of query radio button and then select the query. Let's see how this works. So we we'll log into our application and we can see that our query is immediately displayed inside the mainframe. Let's say that our application allows customers to log into the system under the special customer access level. And when they log in, we want the system to automatically show their details on the screen. I'll show you how to do this. I have already defined the customer access level and we will define the visual perspective for this access level. So we create a new visual perspective, give it a name, and indicate that it should be used for the customer access level only. The visual perspective will have one tab and one content panel created by default. The content panel needs to show the form of the logged in customer. This can be done by specifying a special command of the type change login details. This command shows the default form of the object. If we wanted some other form, we could write a process that shows this form and then start the process from the content panel. Let's see how this works now. So now I will log in as customer, not as an administrator. As you can see, I can immediately see the form of the customer. We can create more than one content panel for a tab. Let's add another one to our main tab of the administrator visual perspective. When there is more than one content panel, we can display them using some predefined layouts. A list of available layouts can be seen in the layout property of a tab. Every layout is different and explaining their differences is beyond the scope of this tutorial. They are well explained in the user guide 
and you can also click on the help button here and read a quick explanation of what the layout does. We recommend that you use the responsive layouts for most of your applications. Responsive Grid Nested or Responsive Grid Simple. These layouts are explained in detail in the responsiveness tutorial, so please make sure you watch it. Some layouts add certain specific properties to the list of properties of a tab or a content panel. For example, for a table layout, we can specify the number of columns of the table. Let's look at some examples of different layouts. In the Sales Portal sample application, we have a responsive nested layout, which consists of many content panels. And this is how it looks. We can see different content panels here. The issue resolution sample application contains an example of a column layout where content panels are displayed as columns. In the list of content panels, some content panels indicate the end of the current column. This means that the next content panel starts a new column. Here we have two columns, and this is how it looks. The two columns can be seen here. You can also direct the output of a content panel into another content panel, or a pop-up window, or a modeless window, or a new tab. This means that if the user clicks on any link in the content panel, the result will be displayed in another panel, or a window, or a new tab will be created. This is done in the output target property of a content panel. In the CRM sample application, for example, when the user clicks on an alert in the dashboard, the form of the alert is displayed in a modeless window. Let me show you. So here we have the dashboard of the CRM sample application and one of the content panels here is a list of alerts. When I click on the Edit Alert button, the form of the alert is displayed in the modeless window. Let's now go back to our application that shows the list of customers in its main content panel. Let's now make a change so that when the user clicks on the customer in the list, we will display him a form of the selected customer underneath the list. We already have two content panels here. I have renamed them to Customer List and Selected Customer. The first one shows our query and the second one is initially empty. Let's specify the second panel as the output target for the first one. Let's see how this works. So after I log in into our application, I can see the list of customers and when I click Edit, the form of the selected customer is displayed underneath the list. Frames can contain an application menu rather than tabs. 
menus can be specified only in the top bar, left or right frames. A menu is displayed horizontally if it's in the top bar and vertically if it is displayed in the left or right frames. Let's open our menu displayed in the top bar. When specifying a menu, you need to choose the widget that will represent the menu. Different widgets look differently and some widgets have limitations on how many menu levels they can show you. Most modern applications use the toolbar widget for the top menu and the panel bar widget for the vertical menu. Let me show you an example of these menus in the CRM sample application. So here we see our top bar menu represented by the toolbar widget and here we can see the menu in the left frame represented by the panel bar widget. A menu consists of menu items. You can see menu items of the menu if you expand it. The properties of a menu item are displayed in the properties window if you select the menu item. The most important property is the command property, which represents a command that a where I am will invoke when the menu item is selected. Usually it's either run query or start a process, but many other commands are available as well. I will show you, for example, how to add a menu item that switches visual perspectives. Previously I told you that a visual perspective was usually associated with an access level and was displayed when a user with this access level logs in. However, it is not always the case, and you can define visual perspectives that have nothing to do with users logging in. Such visual perspectives are often used in processes. You can write a process that uses the display perspective action to display a particular visual, visual perspective, or a display layout action that displays a particular tab of a particular perspective. You can also use visual perspectives in a menu. So let's define another visual perspective and a menu command that will switch from one perspective to the other one. So let me create a new perspective, give it a name. By default this perspective will be empty and it will not be associated with any logged in users. In our main perspective, I will add a menu item that will switch to the new perspective. So I select change perspective as the type of the command to execute and then select our new perspective. Let's see now how this works. When we log in, we can now see a new menu command in our application toolbar. And when we click on it, the visual perspective has changed to the empty one. This tutorial has been an introduction into visual perspectives in a where I am. However, to grasp the full power of visual perspectives, you need to explore all options on your own and use the user guide as your reference material.